What is up, ladies and gentlemen? And I can't believe I found it. It is back. Day 86 of On Shape. I uh, was digging through um, my boxes and came across this. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna finish this out. Uh, anyways, for today's video, uh, we're gonna be making a gear system using those VEC parts. Uh, we, in day 85, uh, we pulled those parts in as step files, and so we already have all these parts. If you don't have those parts, go ahead, go watch day 85, pull them in. I even got a link down in that video description talking about how to get those and upload them. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and start in with our system then. So we have, we're going to need, in total, we're going to need two gears, a 12 tooth and a 60 tooth, one beam and two of our axles. Now, these two inch shafts um, have a little bit of, I gotta save this first, have a little bit of a misnomer to them because they're not actually two inches long. So when we're doing our mates, we have to be very considerate of making sure we're doing this right and not assuming everything is the size it says to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull in two of these. There we go. And it's gonna be in the same spot, which is okay. I can just go ahead and move that out if we really want to. Uh, we're gonna need one beam, drag and drop. We're gonna need one 12 tooth gear and one 60 tooth gear. Okay. Now, just like when we're assembling anything, what I wanna do is just move these parts out of my way until I need them. So I'm going to put my two gears off to the side, and same thing on my axles. I'm bringing them out in front a little bit, actually. We don't need this paint anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and click exit on that. And um, let's get started. So first thing we're going to do is with any part, you need to ground it. So I'm going to right click and ground. This makes sure that my beam does not move. Let's see if I try to move it. It doesn't work. I can still move these other parts, though. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in some of our joints in. So you can click on joint up here. You notice our beam now becomes transparent. That's because we can't select it as the first part of our joint. So what do we know? We know that the face, our axle, is going to be rotating through. Let's go ahead and pull it out an inch. So I clicked on the face of the axle, the face of the hole we're going to use. And then for the motion here on the right side, we're going to make that a revolute because we want the axle to spin in that space. Go ahead and click OK. And then let's consider continue on. So we'll click on Join again. We're going to click on the face of this axle, the face of this hole right here. I believe this one I'm going to be using. We're going to pull it out an inch and then click well, motion, motions, revolute still chose uh, chosen. It'll do the last joint you just used. Okay, all right. So everything's looking good so far. Let's hope I don't run into problems. I'm gonna kind of eyeball and make sure that we don't run into problems. And it looks like we should be good to go. Okay. Next, thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do another joint. Except this time, we're gonna zoom in on the face of this gear. I'm gonna hold down the control key. So if you have a hard time getting the face, the center of a gear, that part that you want, you can see there's a lot of profiles to choose from. We're going to hold down the control key, and then it allows us to click the center of that face. And then I'm going to click on the center of this face as well. That way, I'm going to pull this in. Let's pull it in. Let's do three quarters of an inch. And... Is it lined up? Everything looks good. However, it still has that previous joints, motion joint selected. So I'm gonna go back and make that a rigid because we want the axle to spin with the gear, not independently of each other. Click OK, and then do it one more time. And then I believe we're gonna be almost done here, folks. Let's see. Hold down the control key, click the center of that gear, center of this gear, we're going to pull this back three quarters of an inch. Things kind of look okay. We might have some overlap here we have to fix. And go back to make sure motion rigid is still selected. Click OK. Now what should happen is if I hold down and uh, 
rotate the gear on the right. We see the axle rotates with it. Everything looks good. Same thing on the left side. The only thing we need to do now is um, we'll go and click on revert position. We need to edit this gear. You can see that there's a little bit of an overlap here. So I'm going to click on this joint, right click and hit edit joint. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to rotate this gear's initial position just a few degrees. So let's go ahead and just rotate it. Usually I have a better luck with using negative five. Um, I just find out after trial and error, negative five tends to work for me. So um, negative five degrees looks great. Looks like we don't have much of an overlap, but let's put in our uh, contact, our motion constraint, or sorry, our motion link, and then we're going to see if we have any problems. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna link this revolute joint with this revolute joint. And so we noticed two things initially. Well, we noticed that um, the gear teeth are eating each other. So let's click a reverse in that direction, okay? And then the next thing is we have to um, put in our gear ratio. Um, what I do here is um, you can't really type in directly your gear ratio. Instead, what we can do is we can type in the degrees it rotates. And so what we do then is we say, okay, this is a one to five gear ratio. So for every five degrees, the first one spins our second gear will spin one degree. And so that is uh, one way to think about it. Or you think about your gear ratio, which is one to five, just flip those numbers. Click OK. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double check just to make sure that when I zoom in a little bit, that our, the gears of our teeth, or the teeth of our gears, do not overlap or eat into each other and everything looks great. We're gonna click on our front right top ISO, find our Revolute joint, right click, hit Animate Model, and everything works wonderful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them down in the comment section. I'll answer them as I can. These videos are super fun and wonderful. Um, if they've been helpful for you, please like and subscribe. We've officially hit that thousand subscriber mark. And so with that, I'm gonna do some interesting uh, videos launched up next. So we're gonna finish up the Fusion series. We're gonna finish up the Onshape series. We're gonna do some stuff in Tinkercad. And then uh, I actually think I'm gonna to purchase a 3D printer and we're gonna do some 3D printing videos about how to get started in that home realm of whole realm of 3D printing. Um, I found it with my personal experience there's not very many videos as far as really slowing down and explaining the stuff. Um, it's kind of like it glosses over it and expects you to pick it up super quickly. But uh, stay tuned for those videos. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. And I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.